So we're going to start our down on the farm show today, as we always do at the single A level Rancho Cucamonga. Hey, this is lefty right here, Felix Cabrera. I was super excited to get to watch him pitch. Kind of a big old tall drink of water from the left side has a good delivery. What you're seeing here is a four seam fastball, a cutter, and a slider. I actually posted about him and I posted that I was going to work on confirmation of his pitch mix. I actually have that Felix message back and he said that he has a fastball at four seam at about 95, a slider at 86 and a cutter at 92. So from the left side with that kind of length, and that kind of live, just kind of arm whip action that Felix Cabrera has at 95 with a cutter at 92. That's a slider there. You've seen the fastball up in the zone. That's a pretty good offering for him. So another one of those young arms. There's that cutter right there. So you've seen the slider, the cutter, and there's another little cutter pitch. So you saw the slider, the get me over slider, two cutters, and then the fastball, the four seam at 95 up in the zone there it is there so another good live arm for rancho cucamonga speaking of live arms nobody has more of a live arm than ronaldo yin if you remember he had 104 earlier this year and then he was just totally dominant his first 11 outings of the year were scoreless and then all of a sudden he gave up a four spot and it was like huh what's going on with ronaldo We'll come to find out that he had a little bit of soreness in his arm, had to go on the IL for a bit. Just got back last week, as a matter of fact, and his first performance back, as to be expected, was a little bit rusty. This was his second performance back, and boy, did he look good again. So if you're wondering what happened to Ronaldo Yeen after he hit the 104, what happened with the four spot he gave up, what happened the other night, it was because it was, a, you know, both of those outings were sandwiched around. An injury. And so, you know, going into the injury, obviously the injury itself affected the four spot performance he gave up. And then just Russ coming back. And he, whenever you throw as hard as he does and you have that type of slider, the Russ coming back led to his last outing. But it, but right back to where Ronaldo Yeen is used to being, and that is scoreless last night. So good to see Ronaldo Yeen back on the bump. Another guy that has just ridiculous velo it's like watching a video game i talked about engardo and enriquez the other night actually rancho had those two guys on the the staff at the same time that was pretty incredible so ronaldo ying good to see him back on the bump continuing our theme in rancho with power arms this is christian rubeck who i got to see quite a bit at ou and k-state and i can tell you it was kind of funny watching the game last night. Mike Linskog, the wonderful play-by-play -play voice for the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes, the way he put it was just 97. And, of course, Linskog with his awesome personality has, he says, now put that in air quotes because when you're saying just 97, that tells you just how live the right arm is of Christian Rubeck. So he walks about one guy for every inning he throws. That's been his issue. We all know that, but we all know as well that when Christian Rubeck is in the strike zone, he is as unhittable as anybody else, and that includes Edgardo Enriquez. That includes Ronaldo Yeen. But again, got to get in the strike zone. But how about this? Last five outings in a row have been scoreless, and he only has two walks in his last seven innings pitch. So, hey, things look up. Rubeck kind of reminds me of Madison Jeffrey. Madison Jeffrey would have periods to where you're going, okay, man, he's figuring it out, and as soon as he does, it is lights out, and he's going to make it to the major leagues like in the next six months. I mean, I'm talking to Sean Coyne in the offseason, he echoed that sentiment. You know, he kept telling Madison, hey, man, if we can figure this out, we can send you down the road right now to pitch in Dodger Stadium. That's how good your stuff is. That's Christian Rubeck right now, so let's keep an eye on him. I mean, that fastball right there is just ridiculous. And then that slider, I mean, it's just it's just dirty, nasty stuff. I've seen it with my own eyes. It is explosive. I mean, that's insane coming off a guy that can throw 100 miles an hour. So keep an eye on Christian Rubeck. He is still at the single-A level. We'll see if he can get the ball in the strike zone consistently because if he does, he's going to move, and he's going to move fast. Moving up to the high A level with Great Lakes. Hey, how about this? We've talked about him several different times. Nice little slider 
from Jose Rodriguez. So see the left turn. Let's look at these first two pitches. Here is that left turn of the slider there. See that slight left turn? It's last cutter. Now look at the right turn of that two seam. That is just a ridiculously nice pitch coming out of a really tall frame. So you have a, a left turn, a right turn. It's all coming out of a long, tall drink of water. Then you have just a four-seam fastball with a lot of movement. Now you have the more the slider with a little bit more depth, and then there's the, the cutter-type pitch. So you've seen kind of the subtle left turn of the cutter, the subtle right turn of the sinker. There is the big depth and the big left turn of the full-blown slider for Jose Rodriguez. That right there, those sequences and those shapes of pitches that he throws in concession – is why he has had a just massive K rates this this season. As a matter of fact, at Rancho, his K percentage was 37.3. So far with Great Lakes, K percentage is 29.1. And yesterday, hey, now, so uh, the thing is, he's starting to add length. He's been used in just about every different role. Yesterday he started, and it was not an open. It was a start, and the difference is he went four innings. Four innings, five hits, no runs, four strikeouts, and one walk for Jose Rodriguez. When he's on, kind of like these other young guys, when Jose Rodriguez is on, he's on. It's as simple as that, and nobody's going to hit him. That slider change cutter combo yesterday was really nice for Jose Rodriguez. So yesterday, Josue de Paula got his first hit at the high A Great Lakes level, and excuse me, two days ago, and then yesterday he had his first multi-hit game and actually raised his average over 100 points just in one game. And almost like always for him, it seems like it's always to the opposite field. He likes to wear out that left center field gap. He also likes to hit hard line drives just to the shortstop's left, right there. Actually, that one's to the right, but if you if you look at a shortstop play at a normal spot, you can see that shortstop is shaded over because he hits the ball so much to that spot. And then that left center field gap, he is just so good at it. Actually got thrown out trying to steal a base, which I like because I like the fact that he's trying to be aggressive, improve the foot speed, and use his foot speed, what foot speed he does have, effectively in a game. Hey, that's what the minor leagues is about, trying to expand your game. Let's see, you know, let's, let's like Dylan Ashaka says, let's see if you can be a big goal. Let's see what, what your big goal cup would have. Let's not just pin ourselves into – being a 12 ounce and only only doing 12 ounce type things let's see if we can become a big gulp and Jose Josue de Paula certainly in the process of that we'll see if he can get the ball in the air a little bit more hit a few more home runs it'll be interesting to see how that goes and it'd be also interesting to see where he profiles defensively as he moves up through the system but Josue de Paula good to see him having a multi-hit day yesterday for Great Lakes Going to cruise right on past the AA Tulsa level. It wasn't a great game for them yesterday. Plus, with me going to Tulsa last week, got a lot of video of them and really featured a lot of the, the Tulsa roster and a lot of guys on it. So, hey, we can take a day off from them. That's okay. Let's move right up to the AAA level. And, yes, that is 3-2-1 liftoff for one Mr. James Altman. And I wanted to show you his entire at bat just to kind of show you the process of what he's going through a nice little flat swing there for him you see him there with a swing and miss early in the count then he spits on one up in the zone and eventually works himself into a count and then spits on one down in the zone and then that low and low and inside pitch he actually is able to get wood on before he gets a pitch a, a little two seam pitch sliding back over the plate that he did not miss so it's good to see James Alvin turn on one and hit a home run it was a slow june for him i don't know the exact numbers but he hit somewhere around 226 so it's good to see him rebound get going in july i would really pre he's such a good defender i just would love to have him back on the major league roster in any way shape or form just because i think his defense in center field is that good coach barakoff gets to see it now as he works works the pitch clock he will verify just how good james alvin is as a center fielder he is substantially that good so to have a guy that can come out uh, come in and play that kind of defense uh, center field wise and that can hit some home runs like james alvin can could be valuable to the big club so we'll keep monitoring james alvin we'll keep seeing how he does on his quest to get back to the major leagues
Trey Sweeney hit home run number 11. Boy, I love that line drive swing there. That is just a beautiful looking line drive. Just that low line drive, tall backside. I mean, look how just beautiful that is. That's just that's just a picture perfect swing. And here comes home run number 11, which is significant because the most amount of home runs that Trey Sweeney has ever hit in one season is 16. Now, no doubt about it, Reno, Las Vegas, Albuquerque, he's hit very well in those locations, and that is why his home run numbers are up. I understand that, but still, to hit a home run, you still have to get the ball in the air. Your launch angles have to be a little bit higher, so Trey Sweeney has to be very, very pleased with the fact that he is hitting some more home runs, including, uh, like we said last night, home run number 11. And, by the way, his batting average is raising He's had his hits in seven of the last eight games, and his average creeped up nine points in his last eight games as well. So approaching around 250, 11 home runs, you would take that, I think, at this point for Trey Sweeney, considering that it's been a little bit slower of a start than a lot of us, including myself, would have anticipated or hoped for for Trey Sweeney. But again, when you have that type of picture-perfect swing, you keep your head on the ball, you're left-handed, and you're facing the opposite hand at all times. This is a guy that you're going to give a lot of chances to because he does a lot of things right. If you've been wondering where Ricky Venasco has been, hey, join the club. Matter of fact, uh, that's, that's a pretty good question to ask. And that's because he's been out since June 9th. That's why you have not heard a lot from Ricky Venasco. He, he uh, had some soreness in his shoulder. So, you know, that kind of led to some outings that kind of made you scratch your head like, huh, what's going on? I'm telling you, I've seen this guy a lot. And and when he's his stuff is so good that when it's off just a little bit, it, it's very eye, eyebrow raising because you're like, huh, what's going on with Ricky? That's He's usually, you know, that doesn't look the same of what I'm used to seeing him look. So, yes, Ricky Venasco went down on the shelf, been out since June 9th due to shoulder soreness, and he came back last night. He was 94-95, which isn't where his velo is going to be as he continues to go on. It's a little bit of a tick down, so you can tell with the shoulder soreness coming back. Still working his way back. Good to see Ricky Venasco, a guy that everybody got to see at the major league level. He was one of the best, if not the best, pitcher in all the minor leagues last year towards the end of the year, both in AA and AAA. Made his major league debut this year. Did very, very well in that major league debut. And then, you know, just all the stress of it. Had a baby last year. All of the, all of that that goes into it. Had came up with a little shoulder soreness and had to go on the IL. Good to see him back. So, hey, let's keep our eye on Ricky Venasco. Potential depth in the bullpen for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Talking about depth, well, actually, whenever you mention the name Kyle Hurt, it shouldn't be mentioned as depth because he is that good. I had a good conversation on Twitter uh, this morning about Kyle Hurt and about how he needs to get brought back up to the major leagues. And then we started looking at the roster, and it's like, well, do you option Michael Peterson? Well, Michael Peterson in three different outings has gone two innings, and his ERA is like 170, whatever it is, and his whip is like 079, and and he's just been fantastic. And the next guy that brought up is Johan Ramirez. But since Johan Ramirez is first outing with the Los Angeles Dodgers, he's been very good too. So then it's like, okay, well, it's easy to make the statement that Kyle Hurt needs to be on the major league roster, which I do all the time. But then for who? I mean, that's a good problem to have because that means everybody in your bullpen is executing the way that they should be executing. So it's just tough timing for Kyle Hurt right now. He was going to be on the 26-man roster for the foreseeable future. Went down to injury, and when you have as many elite arms as the Dodgers have – Whenever you miss time, man, it's tough to get back into that rotation. So, hey, all Kyle Hurt can do is just continue to throw the way he has thrown last night. He went two innings, gave up one hit, no runs, one strikeout, no walks, and Kyle Hurt is not allowed to run in his last four outings and in eight of his last nine outings. And another thing, hey, we mentioned the key to him is repeating his delivery. Well, his hit and sit velos were identical again, which means his throw is consistent, which means he is indeed repeating his 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 mechanics. They were both at 96 last night. So his stuff is very, very consistent. It's also 
very explosive as we know. So Kyle Hurd just got to continue to do what he's doing and do a good job every time he pitches. Control what he controls and just believe that opportunity will be coming sooner rather than later. And then when you get that opportunity, as the Godfather says, and as Dalton Rushing told you in our Dalton Rushing interview, as the Godfather says, when you get that opportunity, you got to take advantage of it. So good job, Kyle Hurd.